Okay, so the next video in our series, working through some of the key uh, tricky diagrams for A-level economics, looks at price collusion. Now, price collusion, or cartel behaviour, uh, is, is when producers or suppliers in a market come together to uh, enter into an agreement to restrict the market supply and thereby fix, normally at a high level, the price of a product in a particular industry. Now, the, the normal assumed aim of a cartel is to increase the price for all members so as to maximise joint profits for the cartel. In other words, the cartel is seeking to act almost as if it was a monopolist and make monopoly profits as a whole, although not necessarily for individual cartel members. And there's lots of examples. If you just type, uh, type into Google uh, price fixing or cartel behaviour, you'll get lots of topical examples from around the world. Here is uh, the national airline in Holland, KLM. I think along with Air France, it's actually being fined uh, well over 100 million euros for fixing the price of fuel and security costs in the cargo sector. That was end of March 2022. And if we go back a couple of years in the UK, Competition and Markets Authority fined estate agents, four Berkshire state, estate agents, uh, over £600,000 for breaking competition law by illegally fixing the minimum commission rate that they charged potential home buyers. So there's lots of good examples of price fixing, often exposed by and penalised by the competition authorities. So a price-fixing cartel, we'll work through the diagram in a second, can be modelled also using a simple version of the prisoner's dilemma. So if you think about those uh, matrix tables, a bit of game theory, please ensure that you have a numerical example that you can quickly and accurately use in an exam answer. So key point, the main aim of a cartel is to fix prices at a higher level than would exist in a competitive market. And this inevitably has consequences for thinking about consumer surplus and things, economic welfare, and also for society as a whole. So here's our diagram. Now it's one of the more complex diagrams, so let's work it through it. So we'll build it up slide by slide for you. This is price collusion in an oligopoly. We start on the left-hand side. So let's take, and this could be the market for cement or you know, whatever it is, olive oil, or who knows? The cartel, for it to work, it needs to have quite a significant control of the market. And I'm going to assume here that the cartel does indeed control the market for this particular product. So you have an upward sloping marginal cost curve, which effectively is the industry's supply curve. And you have a downward sloping demand curve, which is the industry's average revenue curve. Now, uh, when supply meets demand, that would be the competitive price and output equilibrium but it won't be the price the cartel charges. But if there was competition in the market, you'd have an equilibrium where supply and demand meet. However, the cartel controls supply now and therefore can act as if it was a monopolist. So typically what the cartel will do is try to fix an output, shown there, where marginal cost meets marginal revenue, which will maximise the profits for the cartel. That allows them to go up to the demand curve and set the price. Let's call that the cartel price. Now, clearly, the more price inelastic is the demand curve, then the higher the price that the cartel can charge. And um, if you think about the, the, the year, year one macroeconomics, when demand is price inelastic, consumers are insensitive to the price. Demand doesn't change very much, and a cartel could, could exploit that. So they've now set the cartel price and they've fixed an output. That then becomes the price that each member of the cartel is expected to sell at. So essentially, the individual members of the cartel then become price takers within the cartel. And they will try and sell whatever this is, olive oil or who knows, uh, cement at the same cartel price because they've entered into a price fixing agreement. So effectively, that becomes, if you like, their kind of price point. Now, they may, but they may not necessarily be free to choose their own output level. You see, to be able to control supply on the left-hand side of this diagram, the cartel needs to be able to control the supply of each individual producer. And the way that normally works is through the existence of output quotas. So uh, each firm 
arbitrarily will be given, or perhaps through a process of negotiation, who knows, will be given an output quota to supply. By the way, the output on the x-axis on the left and the right hand diagram is not to the same scale. <coughs> Pardon me. Clearly the cartel will be producing a bigger output than any individual producer. But here we are, we, on the right hand side we have a cartel member. They've been given an output quota which they must stick to. So that's their output. And there's the cost per unit of producing that output. And therefore, if we know what the price is, we know what the cost per unit is. Therefore, we can show the profit of the individual cartel member. And essentially, that's where you could easily stop the diagram there. Except to think that if you, if you consider the right hand side, they're making a tidy profit shown in yellow. But of course, if they were to produce a bit more than that and perhaps charge a slightly lower price, can you see that there is some potential profit they could make, some extra profit if they were to just expand production a little bit and maybe undercut the cartel price by lowering their own prices? Worth bearing in mind. Although the cartel as a whole might be maximising joint profits, each individual firm could increase their own profits by just expanding their production and perhaps undercutting the cartel price by a small margin. That might have to be done in a sort of underhand, secret way. And this is often one reason uh, why cartels are undermined and eventually may collapse, namely the cheating on output quotas by cartel members. And again, if we go back to game theory, two firms may agree to set both set a high price, in which case there is an incentive for one firm to set a lower price and steal uh, some profits from the other firm. There we go. Price collusion. Complex diagram, but worth having if you get a question on cartels in oligopoly and uh, so on and so forth. Thanks for joining in this video.